song. Amen. Come and fill me up. I know sometimes I need filling up. I don't know about y'all. Yes. But some days I feel alone. I feel afraid. I feel scared. It feels like my first week in recovery. Y'all ever been there before? Yes. Feels like everything comes down on you, including your job, your wife, your family, your uh, everything. It just yes. falls all to pieces in your hands. You know, I do thank God that I'm here today. I thank God that he has done a work in my life. And I thank God that I don't have to look at the same person I did a little over 10 years ago. God has done a work in my life, but I give all the glory and all the praise all to him. Amen. I've got a special scripture today that I wanted to read before we get into the recovery part. And this coming out of Psalms uh, 34, 1 through 9. It's, it's special to me because... When I feel uh, lonely, and I feel afraid, and I feel lost, listen to what it says in the Psalms. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Amen? Amen. Come let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Amen? Amen? And that's what we can do tonight. We can praise our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tonight. We can give him all glory. We can give him all praises here tonight with these mouths. Amen? Yes. See, the Lord loves it when his people praise his name. Amen. See, when we go through valleys, we get, we get to where we can't praise. We get our mouths. They want to get glued and wired together and we can't speak. Amen? But see, the devil wants us to be silent here tonight. The devil wants us to walk around being confused here tonight. He wants us to be in our recovery and feel helpless here tonight. But we don't have to feel helpless. Listen to what the fourth one says right here. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Amen? Amen. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. Amen. Amen. I want you to know here tonight, I don't know where you come from, and I don't care where you come from. I don't care how many drugs you did or how much alcohol you drank here tonight. I know one here tonight that can change your life. Amen. 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 I know one that can change you. I can pray for you. I can talk to you. I can be with you. But I can't change you. But I know one that can here tonight. If you just put your trust and your hope in him, and he will see things work in your life. Yes. Right. Don't wait till it's too late to put your hope in it. Amen. Don't wait till it's too late. Amen. Amen. We need to have a personal relationship tonight. We need to know that the Lord loves us so much. And that's when you're going to give praises to him. You're going to sing praises to him. Yes. You're going to learn to thank him in the dark days of your recovery when you can't make it another step. Yes. If we would only learn to just praise his holy name and Amen. give him all glory and thanks. Yes, in my de in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. Mm -hmm. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a God. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Amen. Fear the Lord, you, his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong, young lions sometimes go hungry. Mm -hmm. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Amen. No good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me. And I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Amen. Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Amen. Amen. I wanted to share that with y'all before we got into this recovery part here tonight. Because I love the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms has lifted me up through my recovery and helped me through my addiction. And, and it's helped get me where I am. Because of the psalmist David and the other psalmists that's speaking and crying and, and mourning and, and just lifting praises to the Lord. Come on, but I want to talk tonight about seven things that will help us in our decision to stop using and to drinking. And things that will help us through the new process of your recovery. Mm -hmm. 
The first one is join a support group. We have all kinds of support groups in town. We have NA, we have AA, we have this group. We have, uh, we used to be a group on Thursday nights, but they're no longer there. But we have Oxford that has meetings. You got online meetings that you can go to. There's always a place where you can go to get a meeting. But I know the biggest thing in my recovery when I first started, I learned that I couldn't do it by myself. I learned that I needed some help and I needed some tools and I needed some resources to help me in my recovery. But we need to make sure we join a support group. And you know, I look at, I would love to have everybody here on Tuesday night, but, but I know they have other meetings. And the way I look at it, I'm not selfish. Long as somebody is at a meeting somewhere, then that, that, that I'm fine with that. I'm Amen. good with that. Amen. As long as somebody is somewhere learning about recovery. Somewhere. You will need help. And that's coming from your mentors. You will need a sponsor. You will need somebody that's going to call you out when nobody else will. Come on now. You need somebody who cares about you and only you. You need somebody that's going to keep your business within the circle and not out the circle. And you need to have trust in that person that you're going to have for your support in uh, recovery, right? Be open. Number two is be open. Be open to change. Recovery is change, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. We're going to start a new journey. Life is going to change. Life is not going to be the same as it was in your addiction. You're going to have to find tools. You're going to have to find ways. You're going to have to stay away from people, places, and things. You're going to have to learn to live your life without drugs and alcohol. Be open. Learn. Sit back. Listen. You know, when I first started, I went to a meeting one time, and a guy told me for the first few meetings and stuff, I don't want you to say a word. I want you to shut up. I want you to listen, and I want you to learn. And what did Jamie have to do? I had to be open to suggestions. I had to be open to other opinions. I had to say, Jamie, you're not right about everything. You're here because you're not right. You need to listen to somebody that has gone before you and um, has fought this battle of addiction. You need to be willing to open your mind, pay attention, and listen. Amen? Because, you know, when I come out of rehab, I was wide open. I thought I could save the world. Y'all know where I'm coming from? Yeah. You felt so good from being broken, being out of that road of addiction. Now you're ready to ride that horse and try to save every person you can in addiction. And I thought I knew everything the first week and didn't know nothing because I didn't uh, open my mind. And I had to realize that on two right there, I had to realize that I had to be quiet and I had to have an open mind and I had to listen to other people. The third one, talk, talk, talk. You need to do inventories of your problems. You need to take an inventory of your life. You need to talk about your problems to your sponsor, to that mentor, to your pastor, to a friend or your family member, your wife or whoever. You need to talk and get it out. You know, the more we hold stuff in and don't deal with it, the more it makes us have triggers and stuff. Because let's face it, all of us in addiction, we were looking for something to please us. We were looking for something to, to fill a void. And we thought we found it in drugs and alcohol, but we found out it wasn't filling the void. It was just destroying it. And we have to be open, and then we have to talk. We have to talk our problems out. That's one good thing about groups. When we sit down in a group, I know everybody don't want to talk about personal things, and I understand that. But if you have an issue on your mind, a question, or, or something that you need to let off of your chest to tell the men in the group, to tell the women in the group, you need to do that so you don't have to carry that around with you tomorrow. Amen. You don't have to keep thinking about it next week. That's right. And see, the more I talk, the more I make myself accountable. The more I say what I'm going to do, the more people are going to be watching to see if I'm going to do it. And I like, to, I like to be held accountable. Amen. Some people will say, well, I don't want nobody telling me what to do or minding my business. But sometimes we need to learn that a lot of people care about us, and we do hope somebody steps in. We do hope when we make that phone phone call to our sponsor or somebody and say, look, I want to use. We, we do hope that they step on our toes. Amen. We do hope that they tell us the right thing to do. You know, sometimes uh, a little sternness, it don't hurt and it helps. Number four, stay in the uh, present moment. Amen. Stay in the present moment. We need to learn to live one day at a time. I can't tell you the people that, that'll start step one and they'll be on step 12 in three weeks. 
Amen. We need to stay in one spot. We need to take our time. It didn't happen overnight. And it ain't going to end overnight. This is a process. It's a journey. That we need to learn all we can about recovery. Y'all just look around in here tonight. We got a big crowd, thank God. Amen. Everybody in here went through addiction. We all had the same problem, addiction. We couldn't turn away from the drug. But we all went down a different road. Everybody had a different scenario in their addiction. We all got high. We all lost things. We all burnt bridges and family and everything. And all of us knows what it means to wake up in the morning and you can't put your foot on the floor unless you have that drug or drink. Come on now. So we just need to stay in the present moment. Right now, we need to learn to take one day at a time. Sometimes that means take one hour at a time. We need to soak up all we can soak up in recovery and the people around us and the other meetings and the tools and the coping skills that we need. One day at a time. Number five, identify your danger zone. This is a very, very deadly one that will get you if you don't learn to identify your danger zone. What causes you to have cravings? What are you putting yourself around that, that is causing your subconscious to kick up those old things those old wants, those old feelings that want to resurface. And let's face it, when do they resurface? It's when you're having a bad day. Yeah. When, you, when you are hurt, when you are broken, when something bad is happening in your life, that's when them things come up because that's your old self trying to tell you, so-called tell you, I know how to fix the problem. But I want to tell everybody out here, the way our world is and the way fentanyl is, we never know the next, the next hit we take might be our last hit. It might be our last fix. Well, none of us are promised tomorrow. The hustle is the same, but the drug is different. We've got stuff coming in here and half the stuff, we don't know what's in the drugs. We don't know what we're putting in our bodies. And we need to understand that the next drug we buy or the next time we uh, relapse could be our last time. We may not make it back to the program. Amen? Amen. We need to make very sure that we understand and identify our danger zones. Or well, what is a danger zone? It could be a restaurant. And I don't want to tell nobody here not to go to a restaurant, but I'm going to tell you something the other day. I went to a restaurant, and as soon as I walked in, it was a bar right here. I didn't intentionally go there, but I didn't know that it was going to be right there near the front door. It wasn't a bar. This was a regular restaurant, but they had an open bar to the right. And a part of me started not to even go in. And another part told me, well, you've been clean 10 years, you can handle it. Amen. You've got to be careful and you've got to be aware of where you put yourself in this world. Anything that seems as innocent as a big chain restaurant, as long as it's got alcohol, it can always be tempting. Amen. We need to make sure whenever we're around something like that, that we have somebody with us that can hold us accountable. Because let's face it, when we go by ourselves, we're more tempting. We have nobody watching us. We say we can just do one today. Nobody ever find out. Nobody ever see it. And then one what turns into a thousand. Uh-huh. And then that ain't never enough. Amen. So we need to have to be real careful. And I said earlier, people, places, and things, be very careful who you put yourself around. Yeah. A lot of people don't have your best interest. A lot of people should know by now that you're trying to live a clean and sober That's life. Right. So they shouldn't be trying to tempt you or drag you or pull you in to those people, places, and things. But sometimes when we're going to work, we got to go by those old people, places, and things. Sometimes, like what happened to me, I went on an innocent thing with my wife and found myself in a bad place. It may not have seemed bad to somebody else, but at least I acknowledged it while I was there. Right. At least I saw it and, and I looked at my surroundings and I remembered my coping skills and I remember what my triggers were right. because I have done an inventory of my problems. Amen. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't have time to write that stuff down on paper. I'm telling y'all, if you've got any issues or struggling with something, you write them down. Write your problems out on paper and be honest. And that way, when you face them, you know what to look for. You know what to watch out for and you know what to do when you are surrounded by that. But know your triggers, change your life, watch your surroundings. Number six, make sure you get exercise, take care of your health. Y'all all know we lived all these years in full-blown addiction. We, we drank ourselves to death, we used ourselves to death through drugs, 
And we have destroyed and tore up these bodies that we live in. Many years of abuse, these bodies need to be taken care of just like our recovery part. We need to make sure that we're going back to the doctor, getting regular checkup. We need to make sure that if we have an overload of stress that we're talking to a therapist. And I love the part of dural diagnostics. Not only are you treating the drug, but you're treating the mental too. Because let's face it, the drugs didn't help our uh, way of thinking over the years neither. So sometimes we need to be open and we need to be honest with the doctors. Right. And we need to talk to the doctors and tell them. We need to make sure exercise. Exercise is a perfect thing for stress. You may not think it, but when you go work out, you're going to take that stress off of your body. You're going to take that negative energy out of your body and you're going to put it into something else. And then when you see yourself start getting healthier, it makes you feel better about yourself because you see a major improvement in your life. And it also gives you structure too when you start going out of the box and start doing other stuff. Number seven, give back what was freely given to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All of y'all in here, I don't care if you're in here for your first day of recovery, this may be your first meeting, but something was given to you, whether it's a person that took their time to help you get in recovery, or a family member praying for you, or somebody caring about you, and help push you to the point you are. But we need to freely give back, which was freely given to us. We need not to keep recovery stuck in these minds. But when we go out in our community, we need to walk up to homeless people. We need to go to people like that with a accountability partner, never by yourself. But you need to use what you have learned and pass it on to somebody else. Amen. 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 I, I talked to a guy in Raleigh the other day. He didn't know me from Adam, but I walked up to him. Because when you go to Raleigh, you have a lot of homeless people and you got a, a lot of uh, people that you have a way to talk to. And the first thing I told the guy, I said, yeah, I'm a recovering addict. I used to be on drugs, this and that, but Christ saved my life. And, and I just want to share a short testimony with you of how God changed my life. And here I am today, and I wanted to pass it on to you. Amen? Amen. He may not have cared what I told him or gave two cents about it, but I give back what was freely given to me. Amen. 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 Amen? We have a lot of people dying in our world today because of drugs. We have kids today dying at the age of 10 years old because they got hold. They thought it was mama's pill at the cabinet, but it was a fentanyl pill that looked just like that pill, and it's killing our teens. Yeah. It's ki killing innocent people. It's killing good people that's got children at home. It's even killing grandparents. Amen? Amen. It's, this, this drug problem is getting bad. Now I saw on TV they got all this uh, Tyson stuff. For young children, they say it could be dangerous if they got their hands on it because it looks like Skittles. It looks like candy. And I'm telling you this tonight, not for a trigger, but hoping that if you have kids at home, you will go home and warn them about the drugs that we got floating around. That's Amen? Right. That's right. They may not be here in Vance County, but I'm sure if they're not here, they're close by. Amen. And our kids need to know that this all uh, is dangerous. Amen. We need to know. Amen? Amen. But I do. I, I care about y'all. I've been doing this a little over nine years. I got clean in 2012. Amen. And I've been doing this, but, but I don't do this for Jamie. I don't do this for this ministry. I do it because I was once that was sick and addicted. Mm. I was once there and saw God pick me up Amen. off of that nasty ground. And I saw him pick me up and put me on solid ground. That's why I do this, because I want to see people live a clean and sober life. Amen. Amen? Amen? And to be able to live that life, to be able to raise their family, to be able to go back home to their, their family and get love and, and, and whatever needed in life. That's why I do it. I want to give back because God freely gave to me. My friends, my wife, everybody cared enough about me to wait for me to get clean. Amen. It's going to be some people in this world that will never, ever forget something you've done. But if you go to God and ask for forgiveness, God forgives you. If you're sincere, if you come from a sincere heart, and I will tell anybody in here today that if you don't know Jesus Christ, everybody has some they believe in, right? My higher power, I will say, is Jesus Christ. Amen. God loves me so much, and I'm getting ready to go to that. I want somebody here to know tonight that's struggling. 
Somebody that's broken. Somebody that's hurt. Somebody that's in pain. And drugs has damaged their life. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt tonight how much God loves you. And I want to share that with you. And that comes out of John 3, 16. 16 through 18. Yes. And then I want to take us to uh, John 14, 1 through 6. And mm -hmm. tell you how God has prepared a place for you and I. That's many right. mansions. Mm -hmm. Y'all know God loves us. Yes, yes. See, the world would tell us that, that the attic is going to be an attic and no change. They say, well, don't help them. They can't help themselves. Yo, since I've been doing this, I've heard so many nasty things about addicts, alcoholics, and it makes me mad as fire. That's my pet peeve. Because, see, people don't know what caused somebody to get to that point. That's right. A lot of people want to judge, and they want to push people down. They want to press them down. They want to talk about them like a dog, but they do not know what got somebody to that point of addiction. Right. Amen? None of us. Amen? None of us here tonight woke up and looked in the mirror and said, you know what, I'm going to throw my life away. I'm going to be an addict the rest of my life, and I'm going to be an alcoholic, and I ain't going to be worth nothing, and I'm going to enjoy every day. None of us said that. But we had things that happened in our lives, and it caught us. And when we figured out what was going on, it was too late. Amen? But don't ever let the world tell you that you will never amount to nothing because God says different. Amen? Jesus died on that cross of Calvary who, who died to pay the price for y'all in my life. Amen. Whoever come, calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with their mouth and confesses with their mouth and asks Jesus to come in their heart, they are saved. Amen. Amen. You are a child of God. Amen. You do no longer have to look behind your back. You do no longer have to hold that frown down and be sad and hurt in the world. You have a Savior, a loving Savior that loves you today. You have a personal relationship with somebody that you can talk to day and night, hour by hour, second by second. And he's always there. I will let y'all down. A woman will let y'all down. But Christ will never, ever let you down. So that's it with that. And I'm going to go to John 3.16 and start off with that. I love it because, you know, when I was sick and addicted, I wanted to die. Y'all been where I'm talking about? Amen. You're so miserable. You're so broken. You're so hurt that you just look at your family and you think, my family looks at me. They don't care about me. Yeah. They don't heard this story over and over. They look at me like I'm dirt. And I went all those years thinking that nobody loved me and the only love that I could find was through that miserable drug at the time. The devil had me bounded. He had me confused. He had me broken and believed that I was going to be sick and addicted for the rest of my life. But praise God for his grace. Amen. His loving grace, amen. That when we couldn't help ourselves, God helped us through his son, Jesus Christ, at the cross of Calvary. Now listen right here how good his love is. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's love, amen. That's love. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In other words, he came to save you and I. Amen. It doesn't make any difference what this world thinks about you. It doesn't make any difference if they said that you were a drug addict. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing that makes a difference is that God loved you, the drug addict, the alcoholic, so much that he gave his only son to save your life. Amen? Amen. So don't worry about what the world says. Worry about what the word of God tells you. Amen? Amen. Verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's what you need to be worried about today. It's when you do not believe in the Son of God. Amen? We're not promised tomorrow. We could all die in the next 30 seconds. No, nothing is promised to you and I. We need to make sure we get things right tonight. Amen? We're going to have an altar call at the end. If you're sitting here tonight and you say, well, Jamie, if you asked me tonight, if I died tonight, where would I go? You might say, well, I don't know where I'm going. I might make it to heaven. 
Jesus might take me in, but it ain't no might or but or if to it. You need to make sure tonight that your, your, your righteousness is in God's hands and not in the world's hands. Amen. You need to make sure that you have made a personal commitment with the Lord Jesus Christ and made him Lord of your life. Amen. 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 I don't care what you done last night, yesterday, or last year. God don't care about that. He wants that personal relationship. He's waiting for you to hold your hand up and say, Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned. Amen. I have let drugs destroy my life, but I want you to change my life. I want you to make things right, and I'm coming to you to do that tonight. Our God is loving, but also our God is just. He is a just God. Amen. But he loves us. It's not so hard to do. We make it too hard. We make it like I got to get cleaned up before I go to God. Oh, I'm going to wait a year before I go to God because he's not ready for somebody like me. But that's the lie from the enemy Satan here tonight. God wants you just like you are tonight. Amen. Don't worry about what you have done to yourself. God can clean you up the way he wants you to be cleaned up. Just let him work in your life. Give him your life. Give him your whole dignity. Give him your life and just say, God, here I am. Do with what you want to do in my life. And he will do it. But listen to this again. I want to read this one more time in verse 18. Who, um, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now you might be sitting here tonight if that's not good enough. I'm reading you the word of God. I'm not making up. James is not saying anything. No other difference. I'm reading you the word of God. Amen. Amen. I want to take us to John 14. John 14, 1 through 6. And this is very special to me. This will be said in a lot of funerals you go to. But it's a presence of God that I feel when I read this because I know that I'm not alone. Amen. And God proved his word in John 3, 16 when he said, I sent my only begotten son to die for you. But now here he is saying that he's the way, the life, and the truth. Amen. Amen. Let's read this and this will bless you just as much. John 14, starting on verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Listen to verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Now listen to verse 4. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. That's what I'm trying to tell everybody here. You need to know that the way is Jesus. No one goes to the Father but through the Son. Amen? You've got to go through the Son to get to the Father. And how do you get to the Father? By confessing with your mouth, Lord, I'm a sinner. I have sold myself short. I've done things that I'm not pleased with. Lord, I want to sit down and I want to make things right with you tonight. I want to ask for forgiveness. I want to repent, and what the word repent means is to turn away. It does not mean to keep going back to, but it's to turn away, to change your life, to tap out and say, I've had enough. Amen. God, you give me the strength to change my life. God, you go before me and help my recovery. Lord, you put people in my life that I can trust. Lord, you give me a job. Give me my family back. Whatever you've got on your heart, the Lord can do it if it's in his will. But first, you have to want to do it. Second, you have to put your feet in front of you. Third, you have to trust in the Lord to do so when you ask of him. Amen? Amen. But then again, we might be here tonight like Thomas. See, they told Thomas they called him Down Thomas because it wasn't enough for Thomas. He had to see it with his own eyes. Maybe we're here tonight and maybe, you know, Jamie, I hear you talking about the Lord and Savior and, and it's only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus. I hear you talking about all that, but I'm still not quite sure. Thomas doubted too. Listen right here. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Now listen to what Jesus says in verse 6. 
Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. 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 Praise God on that. Amen. Let's go to the Word and prayer and I'll close. Dear Heavenly and Most Gracious Father, Lord, we just thank you for that scripture. Lord, we thank you for the uh, souls that you have sent here tonight. Lord, we pray during group that it would be something said that can help change somebody else or something that somebody can say just to get off of their chest tonight. Lord, we just pray that the meeting when it's over, that Lord, when we come up here to this altar, that, that lives will think about that tonight and how important it is to have you as their Lord. Lord, we pray that a soul will be changed here tonight through you. Lord, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit being here tonight. Lord, we just ask all these things in your son's name, Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I'll tell everybody, if you're new here tonight, the men uh, will meet in the back, uh, back of the church back there in the circle. But uh, when y'all share tonight, being that we got so many people, try to limit your sharing so everybody can get a chance to speak. Because sometimes somebody may have something on their heart and they won't share. Hey, Danny, could you start them off back there, please? Yeah. Thank you.